In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join Apostle Joshua Salmon of Eternity Network International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Lift our hands and worship Him. Let's lift our hands and bless Him because He is faithful. Lord, we thank You. You are worthy of praise. You are the doer of signs and wonders. Lord, we return thanks for the mighty things that You do in our midst. We say thank You. For the healings, for the miracles, we say thank You. For the signs, for the wonders, we say thank you. For the liftings, for the transformations, for the restorations, we say thank you. Glory be to your name. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's hold hands together and just pray in the Spirit in one minute that the Spirit of Revelation will be mighty upon us even as we hear what the Lord has for us tonight. Go ahead and pray. Pray in other tongues. You're preparing your spirit to receive the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. You are our God and we believe in you. We believe in your ability. We believe in your power. We believe in your wisdom. You are a mighty God and we are believers. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, you were sent to us as the spirit of wisdom, as the spirit of revelation. We're gathered here tonight because we're passionate about knowing you and understanding your ways, accessing your power and walking in dominion. We ask you tonight that you open our minds, open our spirits, open our eyes. Give us capacity to comprehend, to understand the secrets of the kingdom. We have come again, O oh God. We declare that except you teach us, we cannot understand. Except you open up our minds, we cannot comprehend. So we cry, dear Spirit of the living God, that you prevail over us until the word of God becomes spirit and life. And I pray that the grace to manifest the realities of this truth, that that grace also be supplied us tonight. In the name of Jesus. 
Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. You know, I never, I never get, I never stop getting humbled by the kinds of miracles and the mighty things that we hear every time we're gathered here. I want to encourage us to not get used to these things. You know, there's a way you can get so familiar. Oh, is the healing again? Oh, is the breakthrough again? Your heart must always be in a posture where you receive every miracle, no matter how great, no matter how little, with gratitude in your heart. If it could not be done by man, then he deserves the glory for it. Are we together? If it could not be done by man, then he deserves the glory for it. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm going to be teaching, but I really believe that... Um, I know we have a miracle service coming, but I, I just sense that as I teach tonight, there will be a grace to lift burdens from people, not just a grace for healing. I sense this right from home, that as the word of God comes, all of a sudden, just in the silence you are seated inside or outside or following online, you find out that a grace comes upon you, prevails over you, and all of a sudden, a burden is lifted, faith is stirred up within you. You find out that one infirmity just roaming around your body just leaves just like that. Listen, let me tell you something. John chapter 11 and verse 40 said, Jesus was speaking and said, Did I not say unto you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? There is a relationship between your experience of the glory and your believing God. Did I not say unto you that if you believe, you will see the glory? If you believe, if you sit down doubting, wondering, oh, can God touch me? Look, the, the, we learn from scripture that there is nothing that is new under the sun. It's true. Are we together? People have been oppressed and the Lord took them out of that oppression. People have been challenged and the Lord took them out of it. Your assignment is not only to listen but to listen in faith, to listen in hope, expecting. Acts chapter 4, when you read, the Bible says, the man looked at them expecting to receive something. You can look casually just hoping that the service will run and finish, but again, your heart can be opened. I really believe, I'm a firm believer that every experience, if God is there, Something must happen to you. I'm not necessarily talking about falling down and manifesting physically, but you should leave. Who will not want to attend this service where you are sure you will not be the same? Nobody wants to attend the service and after the grace, there literally is nothing. You should know that you have been visited. His wisdom comes, his power comes, his authority comes, faith is built, your conviction is strengthened. These are characteristics of the presence of God. I believe that this is what the Lord will do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Where's Binga? Please play, play me um, the strings, the anointing is on him tonight. You guys just follow him closely. But um, I just lay down to sleep. A little and then I saw him playing the string so I knew that um, just just play my no keys for me and let's trust God to do great things tonight Lord we bless you one of the all over the world this is this is a period of Easter and generally speaking once it is Easter period across the Christian community Pastors usually narrow their teachings around redemption, around the cross. Um, every man of God attempts to help the people or remind them once again of the significance of the cross, the significance of the death of Jesus, his passion and everything revolving around it. And um, 
as I meditated upon the things that I'll be sharing tonight, I, I just felt very strongly stirred in my heart that the Lord would want me to teach rather on um, issues that relate to taking advantage, um, validating the death of Jesus, his resurrection using our lives. You see, as a leader, I have had the privilege of blessing people, teaching them truth and all of that. My greatest joy is to see the word produced in your own life. So I can imagine that the joy that is in the heart of the Father is not just that we keep commemorating periods like this, but that we walk in the experience of what that death was meant for. Are we together now? When the Father looks from the throne and sees people dying of Lassa fever, dying, being buffeted by Satan, it doesn't matter what discussion about Easter we make, it's a mockery. Hallelujah. The experience of the victory of Christ is what gives um, consolation to the heart of the Father, especially at periods like this. So I just thought to share something with us tonight that I believe will bless us. Open your heart and um, let's see what the Lord will guide us to understand. First Corinthians chapter 2. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. 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 First Corinthians chapter 2. If we can read it, it's a long reading, but let's use Amplified. Paul began to teach something very powerful. And I want us to look very closely. Verse 1. It says, As for myself, brethren, when I came to you, we're using Amplified, I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony and evidence or mystery and secret of God concerning what he has done through Christ for the salvation of men in lofty words or human philosophy and wisdom. There are 16 verses who are reading everything. For I resolved to know nothing, to be acquainted with nothing, to make display of the knowledge of nothing, you know, among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Now, Paul begins by saying, look, when I came, my goal was to present to you Christ crucified. And then to buttress on the significance of what that should mean to your life. So he said, I have many things. What he's trying to say here is that, look, I'm a Pharisee. I'm not dull. There are many other things I can tell you. But I have limited the scope of my communication to you. To reveal Christ and Him crucified. I could tell you about all that things. But when I came to you, I have an option to teach you other things. But for some reason, my goal is to be able to present to you Christ crucified. And then to be able to help you understand the full import, the gravity of what his crucifixion can bring. Are you understanding what he's saying here now? And so he's saying, and I was 
you know, fear, trembling, and so on and so forth. Verse 4. Sorry, Amplified opens it up so I will jump some things. Now, verse 4 says, And my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive, enticing, and plausible words of wisdom, but they were in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. Now, don't miss the context. The context is Christ crucified. He says the theme of my communication is Christ crucified. So every other thing that follows from this explanation is predicated upon that foundation. Christ, when I came to you, my message started with Christ crucified. So every other thing that I'm going to reveal to you is connected to this foundation of Christ crucified. Are we following now? So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, human philosophy, but in the power of God. Verse 6. It says, yet when we were among the full grown, you know, King James says that we speak this wisdom. Give us, give us King James and then we'll run to Amplified to see verse 6. We'll, we'll just play around with it. It says, how be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect or mature. Now, so, look at his progression. The apostle starts by saying, look, ladies and gentlemen, when I came to you, I had an option to begin to teach you other things. To teach you the... The, the, to display the fruits of my intelligence. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a doctor of the law. I'm a learned colleague. But I chose to limit myself to present to you Christ crucified. And then he begins to say that I have done this because I don't want you to just brag about intelligence. I want your life to be limited to this reality alongside the blessings that come from it. Are we together now? Then he is now switching and saying, look, that we speak wisdom. So he has moved to the subject of wisdom now. Christ crucified and then wisdom. Yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Verse 7. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now look very carefully. Don't assume you understand what he's saying. We speak the wisdom of God but is communicated in a mystery. Christ crucified. The foundation of my teaching. When I came to you, I came to teach you something about Easter. But I'm more concerned. I have other options, but I have noticed a lapse in your life. And there is a dimension I want you to come into that is tied to the revelation of Christ crucified alongside the benefits that comes from it. And then he says that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Then he says, even the hidden wisdom. Let's see what Amplified says about it. 7 amplified but rather what we are setting forth is the wisdom of God once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by God it says that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glory amplified says our glorification let's go back to King James so the Bible says 7 please and King James I'm, I'm explaining something just walk with me media Verse 7 and King James. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Listen carefully. It says, which God ordained for our what? So, Christ crucified. We see the cross. There is a revelation from there. And part of the benefits that come from there is an ability of the Spirit to access what the Bible calls the hidden wisdom. And it says, whoever can access this, that God preserved it, that it is this formula that will be responsible for the glorification of the saints. That this hidden wisdom, whatever it is, has a part to play in our revealing the glory of God. That God himself ordained it before the foundations of the world for our glory. Verse 8. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, now he connects it back again. For had they known it, they would not have crucified. So if they did not crucify, there would not be the issue of the cross and there would not be access to this hidden wisdom that has to do with our glorification. Verse 9. 
But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard. This is in context of that same wisdom. Are we together now? When you are studying scripture, make sure you keep following the line. Don't just speak a scripture and delve. He's communicating something here. I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. Now we see the Holy Spirit introduced into the equation. The Bible says, But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the, the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God the deep things of God. Not the things of God, the deep things of God. So he starts by saying, I came to you and I present to you Christ crucified. That if you understand the mystery of Christ crucified, alongside the benefits, one of the benefits, if you are well taught, one of the things you should be taught is that the implication of his crucifixion now has brought you to a realm where you can access what the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God. So, Christ did not just die just to give us eternal life alone. Yes, ultimately, but that there are, there are certain implications of his death and one of them tied to his crucifixion, are we together now, is the ability to access what the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God. And the Bible says that hidden wisdom was prepared by God himself that at a point in the church age, Man will buy a technology called a mystery. Remember he said, we speak this wisdom. The goal is for you to access it. But between you and that wisdom is a mystery you must understand. It is not the wisdom that is the mystery. The mystery is the name of the technology that transfers that mystery. That wisdom from God to you. He said, we speak it in a mystery. I go to Sabo in a vehicle. The vehicle is not me. The goal is to take me to Sabo. But the means of transportation is called a vehicle. The means of accessing this wisdom, the Bible says is a mystery. So we are going to find out what this mystery is tonight. And the Bible says, whoever finds that mystery will access the wisdom of God. And the result of that encounter is glory. Glory. That the saints in light don't just become glorified just because they want to. On account of the death of Jesus Christ, there is something that his death granted unto us. Are we together now? And the Bible says that if you find out one of those things that the death of Jesus Christ provided for you, the hidden wisdom of God that is accessed through a mystery. I stop because, remember, Paul is teaching here. And then Paul now begins to introduce the person of the Holy Spirit as the searcher of the wisdom of God. But he said, my, my point now, let's leave the Holy Spirit issue. We are coming there. What is the mystery that communicates this thing that the Bible calls the deep things? The deep things. What are they? Because whoever can access these deep things, the Bible calls them the hidden wisdom that not even the men of the world nor the princes knew. If, if they had known that the goal of Jesus' death among other things was to grant us access to that mystery so that we will be glorified, he said they would have made sure the Lord of glory did not die. Are we together? Galatians chapter 3. We are coming back here. Galatians chapter 3. Please give us from verse 10. You will be so blessed tonight. My prayer for you is that the things you are going to learn, you will so understand them and they will produce strange victory in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the cross, for it is written, 
Cursed is everyone that continueth not in the things that are written in the book of the law. Read on. Next verse, please. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. 12. It says, And the law is not of faith, but that man, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. 13. Then it says, Christ hath redeemed us from the cause of the law. And it tells us how he did that. It says, Being made a cause. For it is written, Cause is everyone that hangs on a tree. We see the cross back again. Are we together now? Remember, Paul said, Christ crucified. Christ crucified. That's his message. When I came to you, I looked at a lapse in your life. That the foundation to remedy that lapse is a revelation of Christ crucified and the full import of what the crucifixion does to you. But I'm choosing an aspect of it that you can access the deep things of God on the strength of this revelation of Christ crucified and on the strength of those deep things you can manifest glory. The Bible says that the blessing of Abraham, I've taught you, the blessing of Abraham is not cars, not money. The blessing of Abraham is not even what we call the blessing. The blessing of Abraham is what the Bible calls justification by faith. That's the blessing of Abraham. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So we, like faithful Abraham, we believe God and then we are justified by believing him. That the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. And notice this, he says that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So all of this journey is to make sure that even when we are justified, that's not the end of it. That we get to a point where we may receive the promise of the Spirit. There is something about a technology that transfers the spirit into a man. And the Bible says it was because Christ became a curse on the cross. Are we together now? And then we believe in that substitutionary sacrifice like we call it. And the implication is that we are justified by faith. What does that mean? We are declared not guilty. We are declared blameless. Having the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is his very nature. Are we together? On account of that righteousness... The Bible now declares that the Spirit of God can come upon us. We receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Then it stops there. Paul now is trying to explain to the people. When the Holy Spirit comes, what does he do? When the Holy Spirit comes, what is the implication? If there was no cross, there would not be death. If there was no death... There would not be burial. There would not be resurrection. There would not be exaltation, justification. And that meant that there would be no access to receive the life of God. There would be no access to receive justification. And ultimately, we will not be able to access the person of the Holy Spirit. The final journey was to make sure that every man can become a host of the Spirit of God. And the Bible says, if Satan had known that that death was a string leading from one place, they will make sure that the process did not even start. Are you getting what Paul is teaching them now? Had they known that the whole goal was not to punish a man, but to use a man like a scapegoat and transfer the Spirit of God in man, he said they would insist that Jesus did not die. Are we together? Let's go back to our scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, just leave us stand there. But God hath revealed them to us by His Spirit. Are you seeing now? So, He has revealed them to us by His Spirit. We have accessed that Spirit. And so we have capacity to receive revelation from Him. And then He says something interesting. He says, for the Spirit. Which Spirit? The same Spirit we have received. He's telling us certain things the Spirit can do. And one of it is that the Spirit can search all things. The deep things of God now. We are investigating how to arrive there. The Bible tells us where the deep things are stored. We are going to see it closely. It says the deep things of God. Then he now digresses to explain something. He said, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. 
but the spirit are we together now so we know that the only person who can access whatever it is in God is the spirit of God you cannot receive anything from God without the spirit helping you do we agree next verse now we have received say I have received it says not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God why did we receive him it says that we may know that we may not just that we may feel spiritual that the spirit among other things is resident in us that we may know the things that are freely given did you hear the Bible says God prepared certain things to be given to the saints for our glorification? Go back please to verse, just go back to verse um, 5 now I believe from where we talk about the mystery. It says, okay verse 3, I think it's verse 3. Um, okay, six, six, six. I think it should be six. How be it? Thank you. We speak the wisdom of God among them that are perfect. The word perfect is mature. Yet, not the wisdom of this world, not the prince of this world that come to naught. Verse seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So, this wisdom is spoken. But it is spoken in a mystery. A mystery that God ordained. Are we together? And the Bible lets us know that by that mystery we can access everything that is given to us. There is a spiritual system for accessing the deep things of God. Listen, if you understand what I teach you tonight, you will know from where strange and unusual songs come from. If you understand what I teach you tonight, you will know where strange ideas and supernatural solutions come from. The Bible tells you that in, at, as a result of the death of Christ, that you can access the mind, not just the mind of Christ, the mind of the Father, that resident there is the hidden wisdom called the deep things of God. He says whoever can find it, the Holy Spirit brings it to you. But there is a mystery you must engage. Listen, the Holy Spirit is many things. One of what he is is a searcher. But he does not just search until the mystery is engaged. There is a mystery that you engage. He no longer becomes a comforter. He no longer becomes a... He starts to search. There is something that can be done on earth that switches the ministry of the Spirit to go to the mind of the Father and start searching the deep things and bring it to you. And he says, if you find it, your life will spell glory. Paul is teaching them. Paul looked at their lives and said, no. Everything I see happening to you should happen to human beings. I don't see you accessing realities from another realm. He said, let me teach you something. I, I wanted to teach you a lot of things, but I see there is no glory in your life. Let's start the lecture. The foundation is Christ crucified. That when Jesus Christ hung on that cross, the implication of everything that happened at Calvary was to the end that we be justified, comma, to the end that we receive the Spirit. Because no man knows what is in the heart of the man except that Spirit. So the Father allowed His Spirit, who knows what is in His heart, to be domiciled in every believer. But the Bible says that the Spirit of God is many things. He's a counselor, he's an advocate, but there is a mystery that can be engaged that will make the spirit to live whatever he's doing and start searching the mind of the father and bring to the saints something called the deep things. He said the hidden wisdom and says God prepared it for my glorification. Many people have taught that this mystery is just to blast in tongues. And once you blast in tongues, the Holy Spirit starts searching. How many times have you prayed in tongues in your life? And you have seen that you prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. 
speak. But we speak this mystery. When we come to those who are matured and we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Do you know what Paul is saying? He's saying, I am, when I come to mature believers, I know that I cannot teach them peripheral things. I have to teach them the deep things of God. But when I come to them, I engage this mystery and the Spirit of God starts to download deep things and it is those deep things I give them. When I come to those who are matured, it says we speak this, mis- this wisdom to them, but in a mystery, a mystery that only the Holy Ghost can deliver unto men. Listen, I show you a secret tonight that is the secret of death eternally. There's no such thing as being bankrupt. You will find this, you apply this in your life, in your business, you will come up with things that will shock men. Everybody will know that this one, this one cannot be from the earth realm. It's not the wisdom of men, so you can't learn it in school. It's not the wisdom of the princes of this world, so no elder can advise you into it. This one is only available, it was taught in the mind of God himself, and only the Spirit can access the mind of Christ. But your own assignment is to find out what the mystery is. The Bible says any time that mystery is engaged, the Holy Ghost starts to search. There is a spiritual system for accessing deep, hidden revelations. There is a spiritual system for accessing strategies. There are people on earth who have found this secret and their life becomes an unending wonder. It looks like there is a fountain within them. They have learned how to tap into an ability that is higher and greater than their age, their level, their education, their everything. This is what I want to teach you. If you have this, I can tell you happy Easter. If you don't have this, we can rejoice for nothing and eat and go back and there is no glory in our lives. There is a relationship between the sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. The sufferings of Christ and the glory that follows. The sufferings of Christ culminated in his crucifixion. It didn't start in his crucifixion. The sufferings of Christ started right from his passion at Gethsemane. I hope you know that at Gethsemane, that's where Christ became the second Adam. Because two things happened to Adam in the Garden of Eden. First, Adam lost what we call righteousness, right? The nature of God, he lost it. He still had the likeness of God, but he lost the image. The Holy Spirit, he lost. So, if Christ were to be the second Adam, he would have to lose those two things too. Are we together now? Yes. And the only condition for Christ to lose righteousness is to become sin. And he became sin through what we call in theology the doctrine of interpenetration. That's what the communion is. The mystery that two people become one. Ejimi and his wife now, as far as God is concerned, are one. She has her own body, he has his body, but in the realm of the spirit they are one. Whatever accesses him can access her without permission. If he agrees, she will pay for it. Because they have become one. Are we, are we together now? And the Bible says that when that communion was broken, remember, I think I've taught this many times in this place, that the reason why there were 12 men, you see, do you know why it was only men in, 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 um, in, in the upper room? That's where they had the communion. They were men because men are the carriers of the seeds. And sin is transferred through reproduction. Are we together now? Women don't carry the seeds. Women only receive the seed. And give birth to another life. So the men there were standing, 12 of them in number. 12 is the number of government. So they were there. It was the whole world prophetically entering into that covenant where man can now, Christ can now take up the nature of man. That's why he said, if you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have your life. So he broke himself and said, eat. And it gave access for him to carry the whole nature of man. Watch this. Then he went to Gethsemane and he began to cry. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. What cup? The cup was not death. The cup was the Holy Spirit leaving him. Because the moment the Holy Spirit leaves him, he cannot be in touch with heaven again. 
Remember the connect of the mind. Remember it is the spirit. When he said Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, did the father reply? Because that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. The Holy Spirit was not with Jesus on the cross. If he was with Jesus, the nails would not enter his hands. He had to leave Jesus. That was where the cry was happening. For the first time, the Trinity would be separated. And he said, can this cup, this cup of disunion, can it pass off me? He said, but it has to happen. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That was the reason why when they held him from that time, everything that happened to him was happening to Adam and whoever came from Adam. You see that now? Then, when he was hung on that cross, the Bible tells us that, you know, the nails and everything, and he stood there and listen to what he said. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Jesus now went to hell. I hope you know that Jesus went to hell to fight Satan, not with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. He went as man, Adam, to hell. The Holy Ghost was not there. No, it was not there at all. You see that? If the Holy Ghost was there, Jesus would not be able to go where he is going. Are we together now? And he stood there, defeated Satan, collected the keys. And then on the third day, that same spirit that had left him now came back. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the Bible says, if that same spirit dwells now today, in your mortal body it would do certain things i'm just giving us a little you know just play with our minds a little let's go back to what we are discussing he said that there is a mystery that activates the holy spirit searching the deep things of god and revealing it to us and he says tied to it is our glorification among the many things listen carefully among the many things that this mystery can bring is to transport the superior wisdom of God and to reveal them to man through the spirit that part of the blessings of the crucifixion of Christ and the import of redemption is the ability to engage a mystery that causes the Holy Spirit to search the deep things of God and reveals to man the mystery that controls creativity the mystery that controls innovation, the mystery that controls divine strategy, the mystery that controls supernatural solutions, the mystery that can stir up every dormant gifting and ability in man, the hidden mystery. Let's discuss the technology of activating this mystery. Jesus. Number one, write this down. The first thing I want you to note is that the mind of God is a compendium of infinite wisdom. Write it down. The mind of God. God has a mind. The Bible says that the spirit can search everything in the mind of God, even the deep things. So write it down. That God's mind, God himself, his mind is full of infinite wisdom. Number two. Whatever this mystery is, we know that it is engaged by speaking. Write it down. We are establishing something now. Please just help those under the anointing. Let's be sensitive. I believe that God will be giving a lot of impartations. The mystery is engaged by speaking. So we know that for the activation of this mystery, your mouth has a role to play. Now listen very carefully. Number three, you see, this thing we call speaking in tongues, look at me everybody, look at me, we have missed a lot in it. Those who taught us speaking in tongues, taught us that every time you open your mouth, you are doing the same thing. Speaking in tongues has dimensions and all those dimensions have allocations in the spirit for what they achieve. Just because it looks like you are doing the same thing. So you think every time you are speaking in tongues, 
this mystery is activated by speaking. There is the speaking in tongues that is for intercession. There is the speaking in tongues that is engaging the mystery that makes the spirit of God to start searching the deep things of God. It's not just that because you open your mouth, you are praying. I'm going to guide you. You will understand what I'm saying shortly. It is the mystery of speaking in an unknown tongue. Listen. But the goal is not intercession, not supplication. The goal is a system of reception. That speaking in tongues is not only an instrument for intercession. There is a dimension of tongues that you speak to receive. You receive things in the spirit by engaging that mystery. Not just interceding for sinners. Not just praying. There is a dimension of the hidden wisdom of God. That every time you begin to utter tongues with that revelation and with that consciousness. The Holy Spirit does not just come as an intercessor. It's a message you are sending to the Spirit that I am in need of a mystery. And the Holy Spirit says, I get the message you are saying. There is a way you can pray that he knows I'm interceding for a sinner. He joins you. There is a way you can pray, but that there is a tongue you can utter from the earth. That is a message to the Holy Ghost. I am stranded. I need something for my glory. And he goes and starts to search. Most of us think every time we pray in tongues, because it sounds the same, you think you are saying the same thing. Those who have taught praying in tongues have only taught it with respect to accessing spiritual power. Like, okay, power, if you want power, just pray in tongues. Or if you want to feel like you're a prayer warrior, there are all kinds of dimensions. The same electricity powers a keyboard. The same electricity powers fan. The same electricity, but there is a way you can channel it. There is a dimension of tongues that is not for intercession. It is a dimension the moment you utter it the spirit of God goes to the mind of the father that the end of that tongues is a revelation of something you did not know before you started praying. That tongues cannot stop with you saying amen and you go back. No way. No way. Mm -mm. You don't just pray and finish The one you are praying when you pray Just say thank you Jesus Lord I give you all the glory Because you were interceding And you were building up your spirit man But that when you engage these tongues Something must leave God And manifest physically You can hold it and say this is the answer I give you thanks Then the secret was revealed to Daniel a king came and said, tell me my dream and the interpretation, otherwise I will destroy you. Daniel showed us. I don't know what Daniel did in the night. He said, king, there is no man that can know this thing. No. He said, but wait, before you kill us, give me time. In the night when others will help that lady, please. In the night when I don't know what Daniel did, but all I know is that Daniel tapped into a frequency in the spirit and Daniel received this. Let me tell you this. Listen very carefully. I know this because there was a prayer Daniel was praying that made Gabriel to come to earth, not to fight, but to bring a message. It's in your Bible. He was praying a prayer. Many people say that no, it was not a it was not just a prayer of warfare. It, Gabriel said, I am sent. Something about your prayer. God heaven, I am come with the answer, understanding. And the Bible says this mystery, God ordained it for our glory. Daniel was an ordinary man. These saints in the Bible were ordinary people. It is these mysteries that turn them to become like gods upon the earth. What kind of men are these? They want to kill somebody and a human being with flesh and blood says, give me time. He goes to the secret place and says, king, I have your answer. And the king looked at him. The dreamer forgot his dream. The dreamer forgot his dream. And someone went to bed and all of a sudden came back. This one is not word of knowledge. Oh. This is a download of a strategy. Word of knowledge gives you in part. This one comes to give you an information. 
Imagine what that would do to your life. Imagine that you can tap. Let me tell you, listen. Without this strategy, you will never move forward in life. You will get to points where you will stay grounded. Nothing on earth has the capacity to move you. And the Spirit of God just stands and Oh, I'm born again. Ba, 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 ba. You can pray for three hours and intercede for everybody. And the Holy Ghost will say, If you know, this is what Apostle Paul. That guy was a dangerous guy. That Paul, you see. Paul came and saw the believers and knew what was wrong. He knew what was wrong with their spiritual life. You guys are zealous. You guys pray all the time. But there's something you don't have. Let me teach you. Remember, they were filled with the Holy Ghost already. What he did in chapter 12, 14 was to explain to them. But Paul saw that they were not maximizing certain things. He said, let me teach you. You see all these mysteries I share. Let me show you how they come. This Paul teaching now. Paul says, I am ordinary. Some of the apostles knew Jesus before me. But I was taught this mystery. And every time I engaged it, it was while Paul was doing this that the Holy Ghost brought him a mystery. He said, Church, let me arrange the gifts of the Spirit now in a way that will profit the body. That's not normal. You don't do that by education. Let me tell you, there are things God has brought to me by this truth you see Ba when the truth of scripture comes to you from heaven you may not be able to share everything but there are truths some of this system of operating in the anointing this is how they came a visitation son this is how this thing works if you understand what I'm saying brothers and sisters the next time you go to pray, many of you will have, some of you have done it unconsciously. That's why you see people come to testify. I went to bed and I had a visitation. No, nobody just comes. They are called. They may use the face of a man. They may, God had mercy on you. You just knew you were praying. Something about your prayer called heaven. Listen, read your Bible. And see men who called heaven. Some did not get an answer. Some got an answer. The Bible calls it a mystery. How could God leave men on earth without an assistance? Do you think God knows? God does not know that you need to prosper. Do you think God does not know? Imagine the sicknesses in this world. Do you not know that even the anointing, most of us are stranded. We don't even know how to use it effectively. It is the Holy Ghost that comes. Look at Jesus. Jesus saw a man and knew that the only thing that will heal this man is to spit on the ground. He never repeated it again. A mystery that came. Look at how Joshua, it was divine strategies that gave people victory in the Bible. None of those strategies were repeated again. They happen just once. They, they, how can a man look and say, I will go over a, a Jericho seven times? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, and can look at that gentleman who gave a testimony. He had it's a, it's a true testimony. I got I got it too. He broke his I, I, I don't know whether he broke his teeth or I think they were supposed to remove four of his teeth or something, an accident. And then something else happened to him. And the gentle I don't know what he did though, but the gentleman said he went to bed and all of a sudden a revelation comes and he gets up and he's gone. Nothing just happens like that. It's not true. There is a dimension of God's glory that will never manifest in our lives. For as long as all you think will bring you glory and greatness in life is just certificate or wisdom from age or just searching Google, how to be rich, enter, how to do business, enter, how to be a good wife, enter. For as long as that's what you are doing, that's Sophia, the wisdom of men. There is a superior dimension. Most of us know it, but you think it just comes just by looking at the Bible alone. No. There is a dimension where you can call for the assistance of heaven. There are certain things, let me tell you, 
God taught me about the anointing. He taught me not by saying. He taught me by imparting that knowledge. I can't teach it. Because it was not through words. It's, it's a lecture. But it came like a software. See. What makes men unusual. Is the mysteries that upgrade their lives. Not their skin. Not their body. When you see an ordinary person and you see a dimension of result that is not human, go back and ask either a witch or a wizard appeared to that person, or something must have happened in the realm of the spirit. Hmm. Are we together? That you can go back and look at your family and they can say, What is special about the Easter? And he said, Lord, there has to be an answer to what is happening in this family. Are you not seeing the way our families are? How many of you have seen that the solution cannot come from it? The deep things of God. There are pastors stranded in ministry. Look at the foolish instructions people do to rise in life. It does not sound human. But because it came from the mind of God. It produces strange results. Go around the city seven times. Because it came to a man. He went round and the city collapsed. Are we blessed? I'm sharing with you a reality. That I've worked in myself. Stupid things. But came. I know how to call for help from heaven. If you don't know in this wicked world. The devil will eat you up and spit out your bones. It's not every tongue that is just for building up your spirit. There is a dimension of praying in tongues that is a cry of mercy in the realm of the spirit. I need assistance. Oh God, I am stranded. Except you help from heaven, I cannot do anything. And all of a sudden, an emissary is sent from the realm of the spirit and comes to deliver as desired. Paul said, the hidden wisdom that God ordained for our glory. Are you getting blessed? Now let's continue. Let me show you something. Go to verse 10. Verse 10. Please sit down. Sit down. Thank you. Sit down. It says, But God has revealed them to us. Listen carefully. It says, By his spirit, for the spirit searched all things. Yea, the deep things of God. That's why we stop, right? Now, Paul is trying to explain to them that the Holy Spirit is the searcher of these things. But now he's telling us that there is a limitation to this thing. And here's the limitation. Go ahead. He says, okay, we've, we've read, go to verse 12. Verse 12. Now we have received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. 13. Which things we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14. But the natural man, now watch this. This is the limitation to this experience. Once you are natural, once you are natural, he says, but the natural man cannot receive these things. Why? He says, for they are the nature of that mystery is such that you must be a child to be able to receive it. It's too childish for natural people to access it. What is it in a dance and breakthrough? What is it in an instruction and miracle alert? These are manifestations of the hidden wisdom of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Two more verses. 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he is judge of no man. 16. For who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? The word instruct him there is not just to direct him. Who had known? Let's, let's see what Amplified says. Amplified puts it beautifully there. Give us Amplified. For who has known or understood the mind, the counsel and the purposes of the Lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge. He said, but we have the mind of Christ. 
and do all the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of his heart. It's a question he was asking. Who? Yeah. He says, "Who? Which ordinary man knows the mind of Christ that he can even instruct him?" He said, "We do not qualify to know the mind of Christ, but by that Spirit, he says we have the mind of Christ. We have access something that men cannot have." The ability to hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of his heart. Men rise in this kingdom through the mysteries that they know. Men rise in this kingdom. Your life and my life is not just going to rise just because of our education as good as it is. Your life is not going to rise just by the information. There are things in your life, the answer is not in any book on earth. There are things, there are solutions in your life that need to come. That there is no other way of accessing it. I show you a system that was created in the kingdom for our glorification. Someone met me one time, a gentleman, and he said he works in the bank. And he said they gave them an assignment to bring a particular target. Me too, when I had that amount, I said, Habba, where is this guy a thief? Where is he going to go and raise that kind of money within one month or whatever? Let me tell you, there are things in your life, you stand and look at this mountain. You do everything you know to do, it will not move. At that level, you stop trying. You allow the Spirit of God. Remember, I told you the mind of God is a compendium of infinite wisdom. I dare to tell you there is an answer to every question. It just depends on who tells you the answer. There is an answer. The Bible is full of men, women, people who... They, do you know, do you know, I believe with all my heart that it was part of this hidden wisdom that guided Solomon to give a thousand bond offering. Yes, he loved the Lord. But that kind of thing cannot be normal. It's not just no, it's not just a, will you carry a thousand bond? No. Solomon, there is a formula to get what you are looking for. And it directed him. And he did something that was foolish. And God came. He said, you called me. He didn't say you slaughtered animal. You called me. I'm here. Solomon, what should I do for you? And Solomon said, so this thing works. Ah. Look at the kinds of instructions that would come. You guys are not going to win. No. Why? You are not circumcised. Ah. What is the relationship between my being circumcised and holding a knife? I am a warrior. The angel said, you can go and fight and die like a chicken. I've told you, the force that controls this result is your circumcision, not your sword. So if you want to win, circumcise everybody. Imagine the enemies watching men sit down for seven days. They can't walk, they can't move. They say, what's wrong with these people? Warriors. He said, I, a ghost came and said, we can't win. Your knife is sharp, but you are not circumcised. And he said, you cannot win. David went and carried five stones. Does that make sense to you? Carried five stones to kill a giant. When he came and stood before Goliath, Goliath said, Abba, David, me? I know I will kill you, but at least respect me. Am I a dog? Is he a dog that you are chasing? He didn't know that that thing was a mystery. There's nowhere where stone was carried to kill anybody except the one that the angels used hail stone to kill people. A mystery was revealed to that young boy and he stood before Goliath with his foolishness and arrogance and took his head down, used his knife, cut it and gave it to the birds. That one experience brought him a wife. He became tax free. Are we together? His family was exempted from what and he was given great wealth and honor. Say the deep things of God. Say it again the deep things of God. Let me tell you this. You know why I'm teaching you this? Because there are many people who believe just because you prophesy and say in the name of Jesus, enter a new dimension, everything will change about their lives. Most men of God will want you to believe that just because they prophesy, everything will change. There are answers that must come to you from heaven by yourself. 
that you go to bed in the night and wake up with something that works for only you nobody who applies what was revealed to you that it will work for it was sent from heaven for you are you getting what i'm saying now i don't mean to be disrespectful but you can get up and see just because you don't see koinonia posters around you now go and then don't produce poster too for you is copy and you find out that no people say i don't know what you are doing you didn't inform me i said ah. but how are they doing it here they are not just doing it here it was received that's why it's working and you mean you were there when i told you god gave me the solution for the spreading of koinonia messages is there i came and told him i said god has given me the answer no selling videos no packaging anything put it online and the lord said he will give it wings that was the instruction the hidden wisdom for our glory look the blessing that the lord has brought today because of the ability to access the deep things of god brothers and sisters imagine other things that can happen to your life imagine how the god can end that mockery in your family overnight by one encounter with the wisdom of god do a b c and you stand up foolishly and do it and that's the end of it Do you believe what I'm telling you? Listen, there are, there are families that are suffering that even welfare can't help them. No matter how you give to them, the, the level of trouble in that family is such that even one destiny helper cannot be able to help them. Because the need is recurrent. It's not one time. If they eat today, there's no hope. Eleven people, nobody is educated. Nobody went to school. Nobody can do any business. They are all old. Brother, you need something that is not in this earth. This is a message of hope. This is a message of hope. Young men, listen to me. If you don't access this, you will never be established in your life. I promise you. 50,000 per month will not establish you for life. I give you a guarantee. Go and put your money in the bank and get 5% per annum. And let me see how much in 10 years, that's 50%. And see how much that will help to build your life most successful people will never tell you everybody knows what he did in the secret you are just seeing the result a man gets up from nowhere and builds an estate they call it favor but they won't tell you the dynamics your favor is real i testify your favor is real your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Let me tell you this. In one of the days of the seven days prayer and fasting, I went to the Lord and I prayed a simple prayer. And I went to bed. Now, these, these, these are occurrences that happen to me all the time. I, was, I woke up in the night. And usually I go to bed. There was no light. And I woke up and found out someone had on my lamp. My lamp, physically. Now, these are experiences that happen to me all the time. Opened my lamp and then I saw, no, not this book. Another one opened and a biro there. I, I know because I knew the moment I see this, I know God wants to speak to me. And I just said, Lord, I'm ready to write. And one, two, three, four. God just brought something to my life. I said, that's it. God, whatever it is you have done for me, I rejoice forever. I cried for over one hour. Seven days prayer and fasting. I said, my God, my God. Brothers and sisters, if your eyes is not open from heaven, you will not see if your ears are not open from heaven you cannot hear a man can receive nothing except it is given to him you hear me tell you this a man can you hear me just prophesy and say in the name of jesus it's not just what i'm speaking there is something i receive that is released through what i'm saying that creates the effect 
when I say the power, it's not just because I'm anointed. Everybody operates by the secrets that are working in their life. Hallelujah. I share this thing with you because I want God to surprise you. That you can see this. A family that have no business buying a car. They don't know nothing about finances. They can access something. And in two weeks, all of them are on their knees. Saying, God, what is this? Where did this one come from? Listen, the Bible says it was meant for our glorification. Not our shame. God does not lift men to bring shame to their lives. We don't know his system. It's a mystery that Paul used. Think how many times they tried to kill Paul. Think how many times they tried to do whatever they would do with Paul. There is no such thing as hopelessness for any man. Once you are alive, you are only hopeless until the mystery leaves heaven and gets to you. That's why the prince of Persia fought the information, not the angel. No, don't get this to Daniel. If Daniel receives this, something will happen. Let me tell you, that fight was not Old Testament fight. That fight is a fight that happens every time something is leaving heaven and coming to you. Satan will. He knows that one thing that will. He sent a word to Jacob and it lighted upon Israel. He sent a word to one lady and it changed the story of our generation. That nobody in your family rises to a level and all of a sudden something enters you and you just turn. And let me tell you, I can know what has entered you by the results that follow. These things, eh? Take your eyes away from physical things. When God gave me this, physical things are remote controlled. Forget all these things you desire. It's not by chasing them. There is a central control button in life, I guarantee you, that brings you these things. One of it is this physical result. You have seen it happen in this ministry. You have seen it again and again. No man can do these things except God be with him. I'm saying this to you because the reality of the death of Christ is useless until your life brings glory to your family. We keep mocking ourselves as Christians, going everywhere. Jesus died for me. I am born again. There is nothing that symbolizes glory, not in our lives, not in the lives of anybody. Every unsaved person is still unsaved. There is something you and God can do that will make the hardened sinner in your family within two weeks you will come one night and hear him listening to a message from your phone you say sorry sir this is a Christian message say you don't know what happened to me just leave me quietly you just know that God has come to your family something you did called for his help and he came hallelujah you hear that lady one point hand is touched changes to four points you try it and see if it will change it's not the hand, it's the mystery. It's not the hand. So most people just think, oh, I will just confess, just because the Bible says to speak. And in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, oh, receive this, and you find out nothing happens. Because you see, it is what supports what you are saying, not just the speech itself. You may not know but your results begin to show. First, you will think it's a coincidence. So you are not sure. You are even afraid of the result. But then you see that it becomes predictable. Predictable. Uh -uh. Someone blessed Sam today. In the evening, someone blessed him. Next tomorrow, someone blessed him. Next tomorrow, someone blessed him. And you find out that, no, this, this is not so. Your little church, one member comes. Then the next thing, five people come. You see somebody who says, I'm a keyboardist. My friend is a drummer. The Lord just led us to your church. Say, no, but this can't be a coincidence. I've been in ministry for 10 years. No, there is no coincidence. Everything is intentionally calculated. Even the disappearance of favor from your family was intentionally programmed. It will take something from the Spirit. Listen, there are some of us here, you graduated with a third class. 
Let's tell ourselves the truth. If it is in this Nigeria, there is no human being who is going to employ you ordinarily. I'm not making you scared. There are some of us who what we have studied with all humility, what we have studied, that value is not celebrated nor needed in Nigeria. It's the truth. There are some of us because of the tribes we come from. There are wicked men that sit in positions in this country and make sure they frustrate you. There are some of us, even if you collect salary, the 10 other people in your family who need you to eat will make that salary look like 10 naira. You need to access these mysteries. Are we together? You need to access these mysteries. I will show you how. Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Time will tell whether we are just talkatives or dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom. Time will tell whether what you are receiving is a cunningly devised fable or is a programming that will make you surprised at your own life. That somebody will look at you and say, I know you are a villager. You say, you, you insulted me for 30 years, but I found something that in six months brought glory to my life. That you will bring the gospel to your family. You bring the, not just the gospel. You are able, you may be the last born. But this thing does not do with age. Whoever can get the Holy Spirit to bring you something from the mind of God, it will change your life. Understand this. You see all these manifestations that happen? It's not just the anointing. You see, let me tell you something. With When you catch a spiritual mystery, there is an effect of that understanding on your environment. You see that? So every time people come under that circumference, they're, even without directly receiving it, they become benefactors of that experience. It's true. If you have a vision and you see an angel now, anyone within that vicinity will benefit. There are others, that opening of that portal, insight will come to them. They were not praying. Just because you open the portal, someone will benefit from it. The prophet opened the eyes of another person. He never said, do you have faith? Do you believe? Because he could see someone's eyes open. But the natural man, the man who is scientific, the man who laughs at anything that is of God, the man who looks at all these things and says, look, let me tell you, I, I went to Harvard Business School, I'm a smart man, I know everything about economy, I, I went to so-so-so business school, nothing is wrong with that. I did this and that, look, I'm a smart gentleman, I got this and that. The Bible says those kinds of people. To them, when you are talking like this, they are some of these bloggers that write nonsense and extract messages like this and say, look at the rubbish that they are teaching members. And another natural man will concur and say, yes, so they teach people to dance in church. They teach people to jump like fools. Ah, religion, the opium of the masses. I don't know who taught that, but what I am telling you is the mystery that men have accessed and produced wonders with. You see, if this ministry was not successful, many of you think you are just talking just because of this. Is, let me tell you something with results. Results strengthen your message. Are you hearing this now? That's why for many of you, no one has received your gospel. Results defy argument. You can argue with a man, but you can't argue with results. A woman can be barren, but when that woman is pregnant, it's not water that is in her stomach. It's a human being. This app, you see, is like a computer game. Whoever has the control button will make nonsense of Satan in this earth. There are things I have learned that have surprised me how Satan hid this thing from the church. And those who access these things are those who do witchcraft and Scientology and all of this. So the condition is they initiate you into those devilish things. They say, come, 
they put incisions they do all kinds of occult groups and then they show you something that has always been there always been there you sell your soul to the devil for money you sell your soul but i mean and you know we preachers insult people why sell your soul but hunger was it not hunger that took israel to egypt if they were satisfied they would not go there was hunger and they all went hunger is still taking men to egypt we must be able to find a system to make goshen fruitful so that they don't need to go to egypt don't sit down and tell people uh, why why are you doing this why will you go and sleep with a man to get uh, a job can you do you know the mystery that can give the sister the job come let me pray for you except i'm a man of god you will get a job in two weeks five years she has not gotten the job and she just says don't mind this guy my family is dying there and this arrogant pastor wants to leave me in pain but happy are you brothers and sisters that you can look at a man and enter a family and they say look look at us sorry we are embarrassed there is nothing to eat our father is about leaving Jesus Christ and saying that by next week he's going to go to a harbourless in the village and he said daddy give me 24 hours something will happen in this house give me 24 hours and the man says you are a young boy we did all this jesus thing those days in boys brigade he said no problem i agree with you sir just allow me and within 24 hours something happens and the man calls you and says sorry i don't understand I'm, I'm a proud man i usually don't talk to small boys but sit down and you tell him jesus is still the way jesus is still the la truth jesus is still the life how about that my herbalist leave him i brought you the reality he said he gave it for our glory listen hear me church if we trivialize the desperation of men to see the glory of god in their life we will lose our members to occultists did you hear what i said any pastor any prophet any apostle any man of god that trivializes the importance of the members experiencing the glory of god i guarantee you a day will come our young men our keyboardists will go to shrines because they must eat they must become they will become harpalists our ladies will go and fraternize with the gates of hell we will be there jumping on stage dispensing all kinds of things there are things that pertain to life and godliness not just godliness to life your child must go to school to life your child can be born again and not be educated and as a result your child will become a slave to every other person there are some of us everyone in your family works for someone they distribute them to go and be slaves you are 10 in your family nobody can stand alone you go and help this uncle wash his car you your goodness is real I testify your goodness is real. Your kindness is real. I testify. Hallelujah. Look at someone like Kenny. Look at this gentleman. I, I don't mean to make him feel bad. His dad has gone to be with the Lord. His mother has gone to be with the Lord. Everybody that can help him in life has gone. He's on his own. It's easy for a preacher who has food in his house to run your mouth and say you will make it and leave this gentleman. By the time he suffers, his sister is crying, everybody is crying, this guy will get into gambling. He will get into occultism. He will get into every kind of demonic thing. That's what we are. We are losing our members in church because they are not seeing the reality, the validity of what the word says. We are losing our ladies to ungodly people. We are losing our gentlemen. Our fathers are becoming herbalists, covenanting generations in shrines because hunger is taking them to Egypt. I will never preach a God who is not alive. It's a vow I made right from when God called me. I will preach a God that can be proven here and now. That he is not only the saver of souls, he is the lifter of men. He is the anointer of men. He is the revealer of secrets. I love you too much. Some of you as you are hearing me now, you check your phone and you see missed calls from your loved ones. We have not eaten for three days. Please, if you are a man of God here, let's take people seriously. Let's not just be acting games with people's destinies. I bring you good news. There is a way out. 
There is a way out. There is a way out. We have orphans in this place. We have widows in this place. We have widowers in this place. It's not their fault that they could not be educated. Do you blame a child? Was it his fault? You see a woman of 60 years with her two children. There is no physical hope of any breakthrough. They are the ones who give us offerings and we collect as men of God. They are the ones who carry their last money and kneel down and give us. Our job is to collect and eat. Let me tell you, God will soon start punishing us men of God who are collecting people's offering and not giving them the truth that will lift them. After service, I can stand here and some of you will carry your last money and come and give me and I will collect and go back. Who will betide me if I don't teach you the truth? It's not fair. We keep destroying people's destinies in the name of church. Look at how many young men sit down and they are asking, man of God, you are established. Me, I'm not. Show me now so that both the sower and the reaper will rejoice. But I keep telling you, you just keep sowing in my life and sit down there while I am enjoying it. As I'm talking to you now, my food is ready. Some of you, you love God, but right where you are, there is no food for you to eat. How long will this continue? We say it's Easter. Jesus died. He conquered Satan. Oh, death, where is your sting? We mock ourselves in church, and the only people who rejoice are the men of God. Your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Your goodness is real. I testify. Listen, gentlemen, let me teach you something. There are things you can learn. You will bring one song. One song, not ten songs. Nobody rises as a result of a full album. There is one song that comes from, there is the one you compose that your worship teammates will clap for you. And with it, they will invite you to two or three ministrations and you go back as usual. But there is one that comes from the throne. You will sit down and hear them playing it in Africa. And you will mint money as if you are a charmer. And God says, that's not the issue. I'm just proving to you that everything from above is above all. There are some of you, there's one idea that this mystery can bring. You go and meet someone and say, sir, this is it. And the person says, because of this, come. I will. Read the Bible. Look at modern history. And see people's lives change. When you hear some of the songs that heal song right, look at the young guys. They are not even neatly dressed. You know that this one is the grace of God upon a vessel. You ask them to compose songs by themselves and see the rubbish they will write. There are music artists in this nation. We all know where they got their songs from. It does not make sense and it has blessed them. That's to tell you there is a force that is not human. You listen to it, you can't stop. Something in it draws you. Most of us write songs, you carry a paper and a Bible and sit down with the consciousness of the hunger that is in front of you. And you just find a scripture. Where will I lift up my eyes? Two times. I will say amen. I will say amen. The Lord be praised two times. It will never, never sell. Not in this kingdom. If, if listen, you are laughing. I'm very serious with what I'm saying. If it is God's result, it must come from Him. There are pastors that love God doing everything they were taught in Bible school, but it's not working because the forces that keep men down, the forces that keep men down, can only be dislodged by an intelligence that is not earthly. As for me, Joshua Selman, I have made my choice that this is how I'm going to live my life. My life is too risky to be human. This, the earth is too wicked for me to live just as a human being. I must live as a divine being because it is he that cometh from above that is above all. Are we together? We have doctors here. If you follow the normal course, the thing they are doing in Shika, you will never really rise. Because one day you will see somebody who will look at you and say, Dr. David, I know you are qualified, Dr. Halima, but because you are not from my village, I sit on your destiny. I am Professor this and that. He says, all right, sir. 
you go back and engage this mystery and come out and in his presence he will sign you as you are rising tomorrow he will come in the dedication of a foundation and you just ah that is a is my own i wanted to tell you that i didn't stop rising after all of your mocking my god is still alive listen don't you dare laugh at any man that understands what I'm saying. They may carry their 200 naira trousers and surprise you. I bring you a message of hope, brothers and sisters. This storm that rage over our families will not rage forever. There is a way out. This is that there is a way out. There is a way out. The way out is to be able to access this hidden mystery. Now sit down. Let me explain to you the last thing and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Pray. I'm already seeing an electric cable sparking. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Hallelujah. The overflow by the roadside. There's someone receiving a healing anointing. That overflow, overflow two now. There's someone receiving a healing anointing. A healing anointing. That's what I'm saying. A healing anointing. It will be by the Spirit. You may not be a preacher, but you are receiving it. And it will change your life. Oh, what business can lift me? Let me try this. Let me try that. And you keep crying. You access this mystery. And you are sitting down. And here it comes. And your life rises and changes. I know a woman years ago. She... She got into Coca-Cola business. And the only reason why she got into Coca-Cola business was because she was just sitting down according to what she told me. And it was like a vision. And she saw a, like a, what they call this thing? This thing they buy, container. And she was bringing Coca-Cola from it. Immediately, she knew that this was where my prosperity was. You see why many of us keep trying things and wasting our time? You are trying. You need to receive. God knows where your money is. Your money is not everywhere. It is in the place directed. Geography matters when it comes to do prosperity. Isaac sowed in that land. And the woman started it mysteriously. Help started coming for her. And that was how this woman rose up. Do you know, when I spoke with this woman, from what I know about financial intelligence, I, I saw how unfair life can be for such a woman to be prospering. I think the only thing that woman may know is just how to count money and all of that. But just because she was directed, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I shall not want. Hallelujah. The character of this kind of prayer, listen carefully. Let me tell you the difference between praying in tongues, the prayer language for your spiritual building, your edification, and the prayer that is for reception. Number one, when you pray this kind of prayer, listen, the kind of prayer that receives is not a prayer that is done with aggression. Your mind has to be alert. Listen carefully. I'm giving you, there are certain kinds of prayer that the power of God comes upon you. You are praying in tongues. You must exert energy because of the gravity of what is happening in the spirit. These tongues, these tongues you see, is the kind of tongues that as you are communicating, God allows your mind to still be alert because something is happening. As you are activating certain things, ideas are coming. It's not just the kind of tongues that you go to the forest alone and you are shouting. This one, you are praying, you are receiving. Something is coming from heaven for you to receive. Your mind must be alert as you pray. Your mind must be alert as you pray. It's not every kind of prayer that your mind is alert. There are times you are just praying. Sometimes you are not even yourself. Five hours will pass, you don't know. Because there is a dimension. But when you are praying to activate this mystery, your mind must be alert to receive that which God is bringing. 
Number two, listen. Everything received must be documented or preserved immediately because of the nature of how spiritual things are. Listen carefully. Spiritual things are very volatile. You can lose a spiritual information in five minutes and it will take the grace of God to receive. Sometimes it can be a vision. That vision, you can't understand it immediately. So you find a way of preserving it. My phone is full of voices of encounters. Sometimes I'm praying and the things I'm seeing, I start recording it immediately. Because I know if this thing sleeps, it may not come back again. I, is somebody getting this now? Most of you, when these kinds of things happen, you say, no problem. Let me finish my three hours prayer and it leaves. Never comes again. That was a five years breakthrough that just disappeared in one strategy. You see why prophets were writers. When I'm praying, I pray with my books, my virus on my hand, my phone, everything. Because there are times I will need to draw. There are times I will need to quickly write. There are times I will need to record. I get up in the morning. I, I found out that sometimes writing is too slow. How many of you have gotten up and you literally had seconds to preserve something? Seconds. If it escapes that second. Sometimes when God is merciful to you, he will draw you to start praying. You think you are just praying. You are repeating the same thing. And there the dream comes again. Are we together? Let me tell you something. I have gotten information in pieces that the complete picture came within the span of three years. Spiritual things are very strange. You can get one part. You need to preserve it because you will need that part. The other part will come December the next year. And then the last piece comes January. When you piece three of them together, they equate a dimension of breakthrough that your life will never recover from. So when you are praying these kinds of prayer, you can go to the place of prayer knowing that my purpose of prayer is to receive a strategy. I'm going there. Lord, I'm going to receive. And all of a sudden you are praying. You are praying. You are alert. You are alert. There are some times in the midst of your prayer, you will find out that the grace to pray supposedly lifts. You can't pray again. Don't just get up and say it's a demonic attack. Be silent. His voice is coming. Something is coming. Most of us don't understand these dynamics of prayer. There are times you are praying and you just feel like sitting down somewhere. Help them please. And you just sit down somewhere quietly. Like a zombie. You are even afraid because you don't want people to think that you came and you were joking. You see the mistake we make. When we get to the place of prayer, we just shut the door and make sure everybody around is hearing us to justify our spirituality. We are cheating ourselves of dimensions. There are times you can go to prayer and for two hours nobody has heard you. You've not even started the prayer. You are sitting down and for two hours you are like a librarian dictating mysteries that you yourself don't understand. One day God will say, remember what I told you. Go to your book, page 75. Check the last column. That's the answer for what you are looking for. There are times that I've gone to make reference to books. Things I wrote 2008, 2009. I just remember, I've seen this image somewhere. And God says, remember, I go and look for the book. I remember when Koinonia was going to start. That's when I remembered that God had revealed that thing to me 2005. I now when I was searching the book, immediately I opened I saw everything revealed verbatim. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? We are going to pray. Many of us lose it. Listen to me. Every time you stand before a challenge and you want to pray, don't just go and wait. Oh God, you too, you know how we are. If you don't arise, you can cry, you can do everything you want to do. But the moment you pray, do you know many times you will see your prayer alternating? You know that the last 30 minutes was warfare. The next 30 minutes is not warfare. That, that prayer, they all have their characteristics. You can know that I was praying for two hours, but the last 20 minutes of that prayer... Is this one is, is a serious warfare. What is happening? You thought that after two hours it will go and all of a sudden a grace for prayer comes again and you can push through another two hours. There are times you go to pray you cannot even reach 20 minutes. 
If you are not careful, you will think you are backsliding. It is the context of the communication of the Spirit. Religion is a dangerous thing. It will destroy your prayer life. There are times I've sat down to pray from morning till evening. And I'm unable to say a word. Highest worship is just praying. I want to get up. And maybe the only thing I can say in that prayer session is thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Here it comes. I'm writing. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, teach these people this. Thank you, Jesus. Your people don't understand this. Thank you, Jesus. The way to go about this is to do A, B, C, D. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, don't worry. I will reveal to you the answer during leaders meeting. Thank you, Jesus. They that are led by the Spirit of God. You see, when you understand what I'm teaching you, you will not only command signs and wonders, your life will be a sign and a wonder. We win in life by strategies. If Naomi never went to the farm of Boaz, she would never marry. Marriageable, but no strategy. If the walls of Jericho, the people carried their sword and tried to bring down that gate, they would have slaughtered them like chickens. Just the arrows from the watchmen would kill them and destroy them. It takes strategies to win. You have dreams. Where is the strategy? When I meet pastors, they tell me their message, but they don't tell me the strategy. God said, go and raise me a people. Where do you think these people are? And how are you going to fulfill that mandate? A friend called me and he said, um, I should advise him, is it right? Wonderful friend that I love. He said, is it right for him to continue raising offering in church? I said, well, I don't have a problem with it, but go and find out how God designed the finances of your ministry to run. Go and pray and receive a strategy. Do you know the challenge with the body of Christ? We copy everything without thinking about it. We copy. If I start rolling this, um, um, what do you call it? My trousers are now here. I do it for two weeks. As foolish as it is. Of course, I know it's because you love me and you believe in the word of the Lord upon me. You will be surprised how somebody will go for lecture with trousers rolled like that. He will never ask and say, sorry, is it an instruction that is followable or is a unique dealing or you, you are, your leg is just paining you and you think you are doing this? We copy everything and sometimes to our detriment. Are we blessed? I want you to get results. You have to be at a lot. You have to be focused. You have to be discerning. One of the ways that we engage these kinds of tongues is to write down all the issues of concern and pray while you look at it. There is a relationship between your eyes and the realm of the spirit. This eye is not just for looking. You can write these things. House rent. God, what is the way out? Are we together now? Ministry is not growing. I'm trusting you for the healing anointing. I've read everything I know. What is the way out? You are walking around and you just allow the Holy Spirit pray to you. All of a sudden, you will just get an idea. Go down to Zaria. See Apostle, let him lay hands on you. You see, you think that that thing just came. There is no other man of God you will meet, no matter how anointed, that will impart that healing anointing because the instruction is already tied to a vessel. Sometimes it may not even be to see a man of God. There are graces when I wanted, God led me to specific people and places. I remember I've shared some of them with you. We just do things at random, no divine direction. Hallelujah. I will never forget one day I was asking God a very serious question about ministry. And all of a sudden, literally, as if, as if a force came, my hands were shaking. And before you knew it, I still don't know the name that I typed. A YouTube video. Enter. And all of a sudden, one old, old gray baba just appears like this with one 25 minutes message. And I listened to it. That message changed my life. I searched for other videos 
the, the message did not even finish but it contained my answer hallelujah are you blessed you have to learn this if you must rise there are two ways to rise in life hustle if you want to keep moving around and knocking or go to God and say my God show me the way show me the way God can help men oh. koinonia hear me my God can help men this trial and error we are doing with our lives is too much sometimes the injury that will come from trying may not allow you to try another day again so the key is to be circumspect access the deep things of God if you are naming tonight's message it is titled accessing the deep things of God I am giving you a secret this is what I do with my life Lord I thank you sometimes a scripture is coming sometimes the voice of God comes for you sometimes a mystery comes sometimes an instruction comes you see that God can give you all kinds of foolish instructions let me tell you do you know there was a day I do this every once in a while but there was a day God instructed me I was just lying down I, I wasn't asleep and I was praying and all of a sudden I just sensed the anointing and all of a sudden the spirit of God told me stand up and lie down flat on the ground like get up from your bed oh, and lie imagine if somebody opened my door he said this is it I've, I've, I've always known that this guy there is something occultic he's doing and you would think as I lie down I will feel one ghost I saw nothing I had nothing I lay down like that for about maybe 20 minutes honestly speaking I even started sleeping small and later the voice just came go to bed go and sleep the next meeting that we went I can't remember where I saw a dimension of the grace of God that I couldn't understand I said what happened and God told me while you were lying down your something was happening to you you don't have to feel it you believe it God is not a fool this how some of you can be there Lord who is going to be my helper and God says come out in front of your house and just stand for 15 minutes the natural man Lord what I'm, I'm educated and you stand there 10 minutes somebody passes and says ah promise are you all right I say, ah, I'm fine. of course you can't tell them it's God that's making you a fool like that and all of a sudden sometimes the 15 minutes will even finish and nothing will happen and you just feel disappointed and you go back and say God this is what you did God is watching your aptness to obeying him one day you will be sleeping in the night and by 2 a.m. God will say call Pastor Alpha just call and tell him what is the message Ah, God how do I call a married man by 2 a.m. God say do it immediately you call he say I was just about to call you here is the message for you the place is Uyo not Lagos that's all I saw in my dream. Look, believers, you need to be dynamic. When you are just straightforward and religious, there is no breakthrough. The operations of the spirit is like the wind. You can't tell where it's coming or where it's going. So is one who is led of the spirit. There are people here who came from Lagos because they were praying, Lord, what do I do with my life? And God says, stand up, come to Zaria. They can't tell you exactly why they are here. That's why when you ask them those questions, it's difficult for them to answer. They don't want to look like they are stupid. Sometimes they themselves think they are stupid, but keep watching God. There is a mystery walking out. Then you will see the glory and the beauty. Why will God tell you to leave Lagos? This gentleman left Ghana and came. Help that lady. I said Lagos and truly, truly, she fell under the anointing. Praise God someone gets up and is enjoying oil money in Portacol and God says stand up and go and do two weeks in Zafara another person can be living where there is an oil well and be dying whereas his money is in Sokoto as dry and harsh as the weather is your prosperity is where the voice of God is for you not a greener pastures is not a location Greener pastures is a realm where the voice of the Spirit directs you. There are people, any other place you go, you will not prosper. 
you will prosper in Zaria. Someone will come in Zaria and be wondering what is in this place. The only thing I saw was just a few shops here, but a direction for you. Every lifting in this ministry and every greatness God has brought happen right here because we could access these mysteries. Are you ready to pray? We are going to pray. Sit down. You are not going to stand up. Sit down. Listen. You are just going to play these instruments for me just lightly and then I just want you to pray. Don't shout and just take out time. You just pray in the spirit. Right? Take out time and pray in the spirit and you will be surprised to be sensitive to what God will be doing. For some as you are praying, what you will be receiving is impartation. Some as you are praying, you will not even know what is happening to you. Not every information must be communicated in words. Some truths are imparted. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Don't worry about those shouting. Pray in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Everywhere, inside, outside, you just pray. Show us the secrets of our life, O oh God. Show us the way out. Let it come from heaven. Some of you are receiving things just because your mind is not understanding it. You watch and see what happens to you. A few days from now, what you have received will start being revealed to you. And you will see that this is what happened in Koinonia. Oh, 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 Lord, what is the way out for my business? What is the way out for my family? Lord, what is the secret to addressing this barrenness? Lord, what level of unction do I need for this ministry? Why is it not going? Lord, why is my family stagnated? Why are the works of my hands challenged? Send me help from Zion, O God. Just pray, Koinonia. We are soaking in the glory. Everyone pray in the spirit. Lord, why is my CGPA refusing to rise? What must I do? I have studied. I have done my best. Go ahead. Pray. Lord, what do I need to do? Where is my finances, oh God? Where is it? Where is the key to the next level? What is the formula for my establishment? Lord, how will you bail my family out? Do I just meet anybody? Should I meet a particular helper? If yes, what is the name? Who is the helper? Is he in Zaria? Is she in Zaria? Do I need to go out of Zaria? Lord, what is the thing? Is my ministry in Zaria? Is it in Nigeria? Where is it? Where is my breakthrough? Pray! Show me the secrets of my destiny.
Go ahead. We are not wasting our time. I, I guarantee you. The Bible says the natural man. The natural man. Some of you in the silence, like the dew of Hammon, ideas begin to come. That poultry is my will for you. Don't stop it. That public speaking, you are about to give up, but it is where your finances is. Don't stop. It looks like your church is not growing, but you are called. You just need an upgrade of the anointing. Answers coming from heaven. Spirit of the Lord, we ask you, search for us the deep things. Search the mind of God concerning our destinies, concerning our families, concerning our ministries, concerning our homes. Lord, where will this budget money come from? There is no human way it is going to come. But I know that thou art the fountain of wisdom. It is in your light that we see light. Show me. Show me. Open my eyes. I am tired of doing what everybody is doing. I'm tired of failing like everyone. I'm tired of saying yes to just anybody. Open my eyes. Show me. Pray. Just three or four more minutes. Lord, where is the anointing? Where is the place you want me to be meeting with you for prayer? Is it my room or do I need to go out of my house every night? What is the timing? What is my time of receiving revelation from you? Is there a unique time you want to give me? From 12 to 2 every day. Is it a time you are giving me? It may not be so for everybody. But what time have you allocated for my visitation? Do I need to fast once every day? Do I need to go on a drive fast? What do I need to do? Do I need to dance for 7 days? Show me, O oh God. There has to be a way out. Why are my heavens closed? Why do I fast and pray and yet nothing happens? Why are the nine graduates in my family jobless? Show me. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Two more minutes. Go ahead and pray. Open my mind. Open my mind. Open my mind. There is a way out. There is a way to the wealthy place. There is a way to the anointing. There is a way to influence. There is a way to access the mysteries of the kingdom. There is a path which no foul knoweth. The wealth of the lion has not trodden there. Show me, O oh God, these mystery paths in the spirit, these virgin dimensions in the spirit that mortal men cannot dare tread. Open my eyes, O oh God, like a two edged sword, and let me see the path emerge for my destiny. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Kim 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 Madonna. Just be silent, everyone.
Just be silent. Just be as silent as you can. Wherever you are, just be silent. The Lord is putting something in your spirit. Be still and know. Be still and receive. Be still and hear. Be still and enter. Be still and you will know. Just be silent for two or three minutes. God is doing something in your life. Answers coming as words, as impartations. Be still. Some of you, God will be saying, don't waste your time in that direction. That's not a path for your life. Don't waste your time. Be still. Some of you, God will be telling you the change will not come in one day. Just be patient. I will visit your family, but it will take time. Please be patient. Just be patient with me a few minutes and we're done. Be patient. Answers are coming. Think on your business while you are standing. Think on your family while you are standing. Think on your ministry while you are standing. Answers are coming from the throne. Coming from the throne. God is telling you, I will raise help for you. It will not be with your resources that you will make this happen. The helpers are coming. The helpers are coming. The helpers are coming. This sickness is not unto death. This sickness is not unto death. I will give thee health and cure. It is true that the healing ministry is my will for you. It is true that the healing ministry is my will for you. It is true that the healing ministry is my will. It is true that the healing for you, the ministry, the healing ministry, you will walk in it. It is true that the healing ministry is. Just be patient. I see sparks of light. It's a picture of illumination. You are receiving something in your spirit. God is giving some of us clarity. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the message of God that the same way God sends me insight by the angel of his presence, I pray for you. Whatever alignment your spirit must take to not only hear his voice but receive of the impulses from the throne, I make this happen for you now. In the name of Jesus, I make this happen for you now. Whatever position your ears must take in the spirit, your eyes must take in the spirit to clear up the blurry vision, to make sure that the speakings are clear. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May the grace, the spirit of grace, make this happen for you even in this instant. Supernatural ideas, innovative ideas, supernatural strategies, the strategies that force things to work. Some of you, this week will not be over until you begin to see the fruits of superior wisdom. This week will not be over until you see things that will marvel you, happening by the Spirit of God, manifesting by the finger of God. You will apply the things that you are receiving and you will watch it work. It was not supposed to work, but because it came by His voice, you will see it rise. I say to you, you will see it rise. I speak to you that you will see it rise. 
before the miracle service on Friday, some of you will only come for thanksgiving. Because before then, that which you have received from heaven will work like fire. Will work like fire. Listen, there are some of you, the next meeting you will go for as a man of God, you will be surprised to see the dimension of the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. You will go for your meetings and God will give you epochal revelations. You will command the realm of the Spirit at your beck and call in dimensions that you will be afraid of. And that one experience will open the doors of finances, open the doors of ministry, increase membership, bring increase for you. Listen, there is a reign of wealth and prosperity that is coming upon this ministry. You hear me as I speak. I don't just talk about money just because, no, 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 no. There is a reign, R-A-I-N, of a dimension. I have seen this thing many times in my visions. A dimension. All these miracle alerts are just messages. Do you know why? Because God wants to establish men fast to give us room to serve Him. There is a dimension. I want you to write it. Write it down. That there is a dimension. Brothers and sisters, you will see things happen to men you now see that will surprise you. I know this by the Spirit. One of the impartations that we are coming to receive on Friday is this grace for financial exploits. Please believe it. I'm not apologetic about it because we need it. Your Heavenly Father knows. There are families that must come to just cry and say, God, if you leave us to ourselves, we may not reach the end of this year. I'm rounding up. A precious woman, one wonderful Kaduna family that I love so much they left to church this morning while service was going on in this area thieves came and buckled their house because of the financial squalor you can imagine people now leave and go for work they went to church they were praying whereas robbers buckled their house packed everything that can be carried Pigs, whatever I mean, carried them. Um, I don't know, they didn't give me the details of what they carried. They entered, came, and saw their house scattered because of the wickedness of Satan. Let me tell you this a spiritual demarcation has been made over this ministry, and everyone connected from this grace. You are totally exempted from this financial wickedness. It's no longer poverty, it's warfare. There is a spirit behind it to make sure believers are rubbish to become nonsense. To make sure pastors become beggars. To make sure nothing is discussed in church again. No salvation message, only money message. To make sure that people never rise. That the only thing that happens in church is money and raising seeds. The spirit of poverty. Please, I want you to come on Friday with your heart open. We are praying for the sick, but some of this, let's trust God to make this thing happen in our lives. But you mark my word. Koinonia, what is about to happen to men and women, God has seen your heart. You will see the sudden leapings of men by divine strategies. I saw it in that vision. People helping themselves and it's like a chain reaction within a short period of time rising in a way that is enviable. He made this for our glory. Father, we give you praise tonight. We respect your authority in this house. We respect what you are doing. We take you seriously and we believe you. Thank you, O oh God, for showing us tonight a system for accessing the deep things of God. I pray, O oh God, that you will grant us grace. That as we pray this prayer, we receive deep things from the kingdom. 
and that grace be supplied to walk in the instructions thereof. Lord, I am asking you to lift everyone. Lift everyone connected to this vision. First, lift us spiritually, O oh God. Let no one be weak in this place. Let no one be small in this place. Oh God, let your sons and daughters be men and women of fire and insight. And then I pray, oh God, that the things that pertain unto life, you will give us. The thing, the issues of life, may they be solved once and for all, that we may have the time to serve you and declare your praises to the nations. We thank you. We receive it by faith. And we declare that this is our experience. In the name of Jesus Christ. Apostle, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Keep standing, everybody. I love him with all my heart. But seeing what he has done tonight, it is a call for me to run to him. You are here inside, outside, overflow, one, two, three, by the roadside, online. You are saying, man of God, I want to run to Jesus. I have seen that this is the way I want my life to be. Or you are here, you are saying, Apostle, I've handed my life to Jesus, but I want to rededicate my life. I want to take him seriously because he's my life. Wherever you are, please make sure you run here. Overflow outside, overflow one and two, you can come in, join those inside. Overflow three, for time's sake, just walk to your projector stand. Please do this quickly, wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your courage, my brother. Thank you, my sister. God bless you. I see you coming. Make sure you don't sit back. I love you, Jesus. Keep coming, quickly. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Are you coming? Please make your way very quickly. I love you, Jesus. Appreciate them as they come. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. One more time. I believe somebody still needs to come and join them. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Those in front and those at Overflow 3 and those online, all of you, please say this after me. Come join them, darling. Quickly. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe you love me. I believe you gave your heart, your life to set me free. Tonight, I receive of your life. I receive righteousness. I receive all that you have done for me. And I declare that I am a child of God. The life of God is in my spirit. I declare that you are my Lord now and forever. I declare that the spirit of the living God comes into my life tonight and he's with me forever. Thank you, Jesus. Let me pray for you, Father. Thank you for these precious people. They have come in honor of the call that you have made over their lives and destinies. Lord, preserve them. Validate this declaration that they have made by faith by granting them access to the spirit of truth, the one who can search the mind of the Father. I pray that you make their lives beautiful. Produce the garden of Eden out of every wilderness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, thank you so much, gentlemen. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you, please go ahead, follow him. Appreciate them as they do so. Same thing for those at Overflow 3. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, just give me a few minutes, three, five minutes, and we're done. This is your first time worshiping with us, aside from those going out. 
your first time here at Koinonia. Um, it's a special service. We're doing it on Sunday. Usually our services are Fridays. But um, aside from Overflow 3, if you are here, Overflow 1, 2, and inside, you're most welcome. Please make your way to the front. It's my joy and honor to welcome you very personally. Please appreciate all those worshiping with us for the first time. God bless you. God bless you. Come boldly. Come boldly. Make your way. Please clear the way for them outside, those who are coming. Some of you have come from very, very far. Some of you have come from within town. You are most welcome. All those following us online in whatever nation of the world, whatever time zone it is there, we love you. We bless the Lord for your life. Thank you so much for connecting with us. The same grace at work here will work in your life. Let's honor them one more time, everyone. Bless you. Bless you. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Chinese Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore airline You can also download our messages on www.forshares.com Chinese Network International Duplicating the colonials of Rosalind and Earth.